I'd like to hand over to Mary Ryan now, Dr. Mary Ryan, the head of the uh, Department of Adult Education, to speak on behalf of the department and the academics involved in the community. Thanks, Mary. It's lovely to see you all here today. You're probably looking around and thinking, wow, this is a fantastic room, isn't it? Um, but you're all in tears. Uh, I don't mean actual tears. <laughs> um, you know, you're all sitting in spaces where it's actually hard to have conversations. And that's one of the things in adult education we really try and challenge. So while this is a fantastic room, it's kind of a really traditional lecturing room where you're all looking at me as if somehow I am this. <laughs> and you're all sitting, uh, not looking at each other and not talking to each other. And adult education, while it's based in Maynooth University, while it's a very scholarly department, it's committed to education, committed to learning, we are really committed to creating spaces where people can come together with their lived life experiences, which you all have, and, and engage with theories, with ideas, with things you mightn't encounter in your normal life, and say, God, that's interesting. Never thought about that. I wonder what that means in the area I live, in the class I belong to, in the gender, in the jobs, the careers, the options that I got an opportunity for or didn't. And what we are trying to create in the groups and the common university and the classes is spaces where people can engage critically with ideas, where they can uh, challenge assumptions, values and beliefs, and where they can actually question the status quo. And today, in this um, society of ours, dialogue, critical thinking, the need to actually say, is that the truth, the whole truth? To even question, is there a truth? To begin to appreciate, as I know you have, that there are many different positions and ways of viewing the world, that we really have to question, and I think RT are in the middle of it at the moment, who has the story, who has the power, who tells the story and who's excluded from the story. And that's life. That's the way everything operates. And part, I know, uh, of what Derek really brought to the CUNY University was that real critical voice of saying, does life have to be like this? Is there a different way of living? Are there are different ideas, different stories, different histories, different ways of looking at criminology, politics, history, that we all need exposure to. And particularly when I think of climate, I was driving in this morning listening to the news and thinking, crikey, if I didn't have hope, you turn around and get back into bed. Because sometimes it is so dim and negative. And yet the hope lies in all of us getting together, being able to talk and think, being able to uh, challenge dominant ways of working, of the way we distribute resources, and saying there has to be a more equitable, inclusive and just world. And that philosophy underpins the Common University and everything the department does. Um, I want to thank Derek, I want to thank Kay, I want to thank all my colleagues who uh, are involved in this, the library, fantastic public space that we have to fight and hold. Do you know, it, it is a centre in every community, um, such a rich resource. And then the partnership companies who, who are embedded in communities and know the real issues. And when I was thinking of coming over to this morning and I was listening to the news and thinking, oh dear God, I was thinking there are so few spaces left in communities and in our lives for dialogue. You know, and COVID really underpinned that. So little spaces that we can come together in groups, even three or four, and think. <laughs> and say, well, what about? And did you hear? And is there a different position? 
And if we are to have a democracy that is based on dialogue, on a capacity to appreciate difference and diversity, then we absolutely need places like university. We have to have places where we can listen respectfully to the other position. We don't have to uh, take it on, but we have to realise we're all different. We see the world differently. We have different stories, different experiences. And if we are to live in a democracy, which is so precious, we really have to find ways of being able to be in groups and have conversations, because it's so difficult. <laughs> and you'll know that, that it is difficult to listen to the other position when I want to strangle them and talk about me. So I really have to work very hard at putting my own theories to the side, listen to the other, hear what they're trying to say, and then come in and, and try and have a decent argument. And I hope the community gave you a chance to do that, to begin to say, well, there are other views in the world other than mine. And the other thing I, I want to talk about was how education is not a commodity. Education is a right. And what this picture, and in a way, the architecture of this room is kind of saying, you come in, you pay your money, you get your commodity, and you graduate. But we see it very differently. Education is a process. Potentially, it can be transformative. It's a space that you pay for in your taxes, so everybody has a right to participate. But education ultimately should be equipping us to lead a better and fuller life for everybody. So in adult education, we also challenge this notion of education as a right for the few, for the privileged, and particularly the privileged disciplines. So part of being here is to challenge the notion of medicine, law, um, and other elite professions that are usually reserved for, you know, the intelligent few? Well, they don't exist. It's privilege in a lot of cases that gets people to where they are. So part of the university and being rooted, rooted in communities is to make it accessible for all. <coughs> and when I was on this, it was a lot going on in the car this morning, as it's the radio, I was thinking of uh, Paula Meehan. And uh, Paula Meehan's a poet, and she has come to the department a few times. And uh, she's a, a, a poet from uh, North... She now lives in North uh, Dublin, but grew up in the centre of Dublin. Um, a bright woman, but because of where she grew up and where she lived, education was reserved for others. And she's wrote, written a poem, and the poem is set in uh, an adult education centre it's a literacy class, and it's around giving the people the skills to read and write, because without those skills, you are very marginalised and often can't say what needs to be said or to challenge what needs to be challenged. So this is, poem is called Literacy Class, South Inner City. <coughs> One remembers wealth festering on her palm, she spelt sacrament wrong. Seven years of age, preparing for Holy Communion. Another is calm, describing the exact humiliation. Forty years ago, the rage at wearing her knickers on her head one interminable day for the crime of wetting herself. Another swears she was punch drunk most of her school days, clattered about the ears, made to say, I am stupid, my head's a sieve, I don't know how to think, I don't deserve to live. Late November, the dark chill of the room, Christmas looming and none of us well fixed. We bend each evening in scarves and coats to the work of mending what is broken in us. Without tricks, without wiles, with no time to waste now, we plant words on these blank fields. It is an unmapped world, and we are pi pioneering agogamists launched into this strange planet, the sad flag of the home place newly furled. And I love that poem, because what that poem does for me is 
It says that education in the right hands, in the right space, and the right people, the tutors, can be truly transformative. So I would absolutely encourage you, don't stop. You've started now. Um, it is lifelong learning. Uh, come to Maynooth, come do more courses, but, but once you've started, keep starting. Keep thinking and really keep talking and challenging the status quo. So I hope you have a lovely day in Maynooth.